I can assure you all we are taking a 24-7 all-hands-on-deck approach to these cases. Guy's a shark. If he stops, he dies. He likes to drive. Probably has a decent car, maybe two. High mileage. Uh, there's a lot of reasons to say yes to a movie like Little Things. You know, John Lee Hancock's great script, his direction, Mr. Washington. Uh, what made you jump in and want to say yes to Jim Baxter? You know, all of the things you just said, the Denzel of it all, uh, you know, Jared, I knew would bring something unique and special. Uh, and, you know, John Lee is uh, a really great filmmaker from writing to directing. Uh, a very succinct, singular vision was something that I really appreciated. Another aspect of this was that throwback psychological thriller, getting into the mind of this detective and, uh, you know, just how complex and intricate that psychology is, uh, is something, I, you know, I was looking forward to. And you know, one aspect of this that was really, you know, close to my heart was shooting in the San Fernando Valley, which is my home. I grew up here. Uh, so where this film takes place is um, in the in the neighborhoods that I used to f frequent when I was younger. So to be able to tell a late '90s, uh, late '80s, early '90s story in my backyard with uh, all of those unique individuals, special individuals involved, was uh, you know really a, re a really sweet experience that I, I wouldn't want to pass up. John Lee wrote this 30 years ago. Uh, how does Little Things, uh, in your opinion, deepen the, the crime genre, crime film genre? It's, it's a unique film. I, I hope you will agree because, um, I don't, one, I don't think, uh, you know, we've seen a third act quite like this. And what happens usually in, in these uh, type of psychological thrillers is you tend to be uh, really, as an audience member, close to understanding what's about to happen once you enter the, you know, the last third of, of the film. And in this case, uh, you're, you're searching till the very last moment. It's thrilling, exciting until the very end. And I think it's rare when you have a psychological thriller that you know, keeps you uh, as focused as this one does. What was the challenge? I mean, we're going to see you play a bad guy later this year in Bond, but what's the challenge about playing a guy that's supposed to be good and he slowly loses that over the course of the film? It's a great question. I think the challenge is, you know, finding this balance between uh, being altruistic and being self-serving. Uh, and I think what happens to these men is, uh, you know, they begin on a course of doing something that serves the public. And because of, you know, some obsessive nature that they have psychologically at, at times for certain people, uh, it becomes, you know, more of a um, consumed perspective, uh, a, you know, convicted perspective that, uh, you know, perhaps it is, you know, more self-serving than it is public serving.